Welcome to the High Value Sales Show of Eversprint.com. I'm Malcolm Louie, the managing member of Eversprint, and today we're speaking with Ron Rudzin, the president and CEO of Satva Mattress, an online retailer of luxury mattresses that are priced much lower than comparable brands found in traditional mattress retailers. Welcome to the call, Ron. Uh, thank you, Malcolm. Ron, you grew your company's revenue from $24.4 million in 2014 to $202 million in 2017, a 729% increase. Before I ask you how you grew your company sales so fast, can you briefly share what your company does beyond my very quick intro and how your company differs from the competition? Sure. Uh, we were the first uh, online uh, luxury mattress seller. Uh, we launched in 2010. And to uh, quickly uh, make sure everyone understands the, uh, the way we're different is that most uh, people connect online mattress companies with bed in the box. We are not that at all. We are actually a luxury brand. We are selling you the same type of product you buy in mattress stores without the store. Uh, we operate in three categories. We have uh, ultra premium inner spring, ultra premium memory foam, and 100% natural latex. And we work with 18 factories throughout the country and 150 delivery centers throughout the country for in-home white glove delivery. Our beds can't be and are never folded and compressed into a small box. Um, you know, our business was, was based on a raw materials analysis uh, that I had done uh, in 2008 where I had gone to some of the popular mattress stores in the country and took apart um, beds that were in the $2,500 range, let's say for queen size. And I did a raw materials analysis of those products. And I realized that I can build that same quality bed, which is the ultra premium classification, that $2,500 level bed, um, without having commercial rent, uh, utility costs for a store, uh, excessive commissions for the amount of people I'd have to have in each one of the stores to do business. And you take out all of those costs, I was able to sell that same quality product for about $1,200 less than what they were showing in the store. And that was the um, start of the business model. And that's kind of what makes us different. And since we've launched, really no one does exactly what we do. There are about 150 bed-in-the-box companies out there, um, you know, priced from $300 to $900. Uh, you know, I feel, you know, somebody wants to buy a bed in the box, I understand it, but they should never really have to spend more than 500 for that. You can get something on Amazon. The quality is never going to be what it would be for a mattress like what we sell, uh, which is ultra premium, uh, meaning that we have, you know, more coils in our bed or we use higher grade memory foam, five pound memory foam or a 100% natural latex all covered in quilted organic cotton. They can't be compressed and put into a small box. Can you share with us what the three biggest drivers were of your sales growth over the past uh, few years from 2014 to 2017? Sure. Um, first, we, we, are very, uh, we have been up to uh, this past year, we have been very ROI focused. In other words, uh, we, were, we, we were always fascinated how much time people would spend on websites. And the name Sattva is Sanskrit for purity and truth. And we wanted to expose the industry for what it was. It had it unfortunately gained a very bad reputation for itself over the last 30, 40 years. So one of the things that we immediately did was we put our spec sheet right on our websites so people can print up the webs with the, the spec sheet, take it to a mattress store if they felt they wanted to do so, and compare to see what a store would charge for the same specs in a mattress that we offer. Then I wanted to layer on top of that um, extraordinary customer service. In 2007, 2008, I spent so much time reading about the mattress industry online um, and its horrible reputation that had developed over years. And I said, wow, what an opportunity. I could sell a product for so much less and I'm going to give the highest level of customer service. And if you read about our company, since 2010, we are the best reviewed mattress company on the internet by far. And I ask everyone to please read about us and read the detail in the reviews about us. We, we're very close with our customers. We are 24-7 operations. So, you know, you can order a bed and speak to someone 3 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then in addition to that, uh, the other differentiator is what I mentioned just a little earlier is that instead of being that online company that, you know, packs a bed up in a small box and compresses the bed and sends it to your door, doorstep, we actually make everything to order uh, with eco-responsible materials. Once the 
your, your bed is placed, you place an order with us. Um, some parts of the country, it's five to 12 days. Some parts is seven to 15 days, but we make the bed fresh for you. It goes to our hub and we deliver, set it up in the room of choice. And we also take out any old bed that you have there all free of charge uh, when you purchase from us. And that's how we um, are different. Uh, yeah, delivering to your rooms is definitely appreciated. I remember when I bought my bed, it came in a box, and uh, the the UPS delivery guy only had to drop it on my doorstep. But uh, luckily, he was a friendly enough guy to help me bring it into the house because those things weigh quite a bit. Yeah, well, you know, look, the, the bed in the boxes, they're portable. Um, there's a market for it. You know, we, we basically understand there is a consumer that would need that, uh, you know, but for, for long term, like our beds are designed to last 10 to 15 years. Uh, you can read on our site about them, the quality of the materials that we use, the organic cotton cover that we use. Uh, it's just a, a much higher quality product. You know, we, you know, we feel our competition is really the great beds that are out there. I don't knock these beds, but you know, the, the great beds from Simmons and from Stearns and Foster and Tempur-Pedic, these are great brands. Uh, my feeling is you just don't need to spend that kind of money on them. Uh, so we're not saying we're better than those brands in the in the in the, in the uh, ultra premium class classification, but we're saying that we're the same as them, and you don't have to spend that much money. We also have a little bit more uh, green angle to our beds. We use a, a a natural fizzle for our flame retardant, so there's no harmful sprays or chemicals ever put on a soccer mattress. Um, and uh, you know, recycled steel. We also um, with our foams, we take out some of the petroleum and we, we put in soy and corn oil. So we, we also have a lot of green initiatives going on with our product. And we are a lead sponsor for the Sustainable Furniture Council. Uh, so, and, you know, we, we're just doing a lot of really good things. The company uh, uh, has a great reputation in, in every part of the country. And uh, that's, that's where you see that we're different. Now, now the recap for your biggest drivers. Um, the first one I have was a... Uh it was a focus on your return, return on investment on uh, whatever activities that you do. Second one, extraordinary customer services. And a third one was um, making everything to order and having a uh, high-touch customer service as well in terms of uh, from factory to home type service. Would, would you say those are the three factors? Uh, they are. Okay, great. Now, can you share a little bit more detail of your focus on ROI? and how that drove sure. some of the decisions sure. you made? Sure. So this is uh, for those, uh, uh, you know, who, who, who are listening to your show. Um, it's, it's funny, you know, an entrepreneur will wake up and uh, he or she will have a great idea. And it's a question of can they get the idea in motion and get it live? Um, and then they go and do so and how much money do they need to actually make this happen? Uh, I started uh, Sotfa with my own money, three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars, and my focus. The, the reason why I was excited about it, uh, my two co-founders, uh, very internet savvy, uh, they're the younger of the uh, founders. Um, I, I bring more of a manufacturing, uh, logistics skill set, and customer service skill set, and they bring kind of the online technology skill set. But our focus, and what, what excited me, was that. In business, sometimes when you're when you're advertising, you know, if you go back 30 years ago, you're putting ads in newspapers, or you take a billboard, or you go on TV right away, and so many people are seeing your ads that don't need your product, and that's just costly, and it's very hard to do the analytics. With the internet, back in 2010, I was fascinated that I can advertise my product in a place, or should I call it, in a space that had customers who would in the market for a mattress. And I knew if I told the best story, I had a 120 day trial, I knew that my product, can sh I can show the value on the website, I can explain it in full detail with our spec sheet and other explanations that we have about our foams and our covers and how we build our product, um, I'd be able to obviously make the sale. And uh, that's exactly what happened. So we were able to stay what I call in market advertising. Uh, which means that whenever I, sh I, I, I paid for an ad, it was in a place where people, where, where a person was in the market for a mattress rather than putting up money for a billboard eight years ago and people would drive by the billboard and 99% of them didn't need my product. That's expensive. Right. So this was a way that I can go and be profitable from day one and grow the company and uh, 
we have multiple brands and we are uh, probably one of the top two or three uh, marketers in the uh, online mattress space in the country um, from from back uh, in 2010 to today. And uh, it's just this past year that we've gone out of market and started doing more brand type of advertising. And, you know, with the hope that obviously that comes together in our future and gives us wind at our back for our performance marketing and building a brand. Right. Yeah, I saw on your website, uh, sat, satla, satlamattress.com, you have quite a number of ads running to it. Uh, uh, we do. Uh, yeah, we have. Well, first of all, we have, um, you know, different brands like our, our, our ultra premium memory foam is called Lumen Leaf by Sattva. Our 100% natural latex is called Zen Haven by Sattva. Uh, and then we have our classic Sattva Inner Spring, which was our original mattress. Everything, by the way, comes in comfort choices, so you're not stuck with one comfort level. In our Inner Spring, you have a choice of height in mattress. You can get our 11 and a half inch, which we call our custom slim, or you can get our 14 and a half, uh, you know, jumbo luxury. Um, we also are launching in two, in 2019, we're launching two other products. I, I won't talk about them yet, but we're launching two other, uh, uh mattresses. Uh, we want to make sure that we have all categories covered. Um, and again, we're able to, do, you know, uh, open these businesses basically and drop them right into our 18 factory, 150 hub network of, um, that we have uh, put together over the last eight years. <clears throat> now, um, in terms of, so I can see how from an ROI perspective, uh, it's on the marketing front, you focus on advertising where you can measure the return on your advertisements so you're not wasting your advertising spend. Can you talk a little Correct. bit more about your customer service, your 24 by 7 operation? Um, how did you Absolutely. determine you know, where the gaps were in customer service relative to competition, relative to what you saw internally, and, and uh, how sure. did you address it and, and close it? <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, first, I would I would recommend for any customer in the mattress space, so oh, I'm, I'm sorry, in the mattress buying mode, uh, you know, you can go online, look at some of the legacy brands that are out there from from uh, from years past, um, and the treatment of customers, uh, whether whether it's uh, in regards to um, taking care of warranty issues or service issues. Um, I wanted to layer in. I wanted to have um, a system where when somebody called our office they would get the highest level of customer service. We try never to put anyone on hold. Uh, let's just say at any given time, we have 70 or 80 uh, reps on the phones uh, prepared to deal with everything. Um, we didn't want our reps to just be one dimensional, just, hey, they could just sell you the bed. But any issue that might come up on a delivery day, you know, if you're wondering when your delivery might come, uh, they can, our, our, our reps are all trained to get you that information. Uh, any 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 issue that you have, you'll very rarely need to be put on hold. And I started, you know, studying like cable companies. When any anybody who you called, uh, automated phone systems. And I just wanted to apply what I call old-fashioned customer service, and coupled it with modern technology. Uh, you know, our company is as hip as you can be, right? You know, we're an internet savvy company. We got the greatest marketing team. We do Facebook. We do social media. We do SEO. We have content. All of those things that you're supposed to do, but at the core of it, we are an old-fashioned customer service type of company. You call here, you get a live person, a nice person that will speak to you kindly and politely and do everything to help you, whether you call, like I said, whether it's 3 in the morning or 3 in the afternoon, um, we are well-staffed and uh, making sure that every customer that buys from us has a fantastic experience. We want to make sure that we are your mattress company for life. And I know how temperamental the today's consumer is. And you have to, you know, there is no challenging a consumer. Today, you just have to take care of them. You have to accept um, if something goes wrong that it's on us and we have to make it right. And uh, that has been the philosophy from the day we launched. And as soon as I was able to afford to have a night staff, I did it because I wanted to address, I, we knew people were shopping on the internet during the day, during the evening, and during late, and, and, and certainly through the night. Uh, we do business every night, and uh, I think people love the fact that they can call and get information at any time or have a question about a previous purchase. We are ready um, uh, well beyond anyone else in our space, we believe. Yeah, I actually called your office to get in touch with you to set up this interview, and 
And uh, I didn't have your direct numbers. I just called your general line, got someone on the phone who I think was a bit surprised when I asked for you, but he did try his best to try to connect me with you as well. So uh, definitely, mm -hmm. they do try to do as, do as much as they possibly can do whoever calls, which is fantastic. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. I've had other interviews where the uh, person who was interviewing me said, yeah, I tested you on that. And uh, they called 7 o'clock on a Sunday morning, and a nice kid answered the phone and was able to answer my questions. And I'm so proud of that, I can't begin to tell you. It feels yeah. good knowing that I'm doing the right thing and uh, you know that we put a business model in place that really does the right thing. Um, you know, this is a, you know, we have an excellent reputation with the Better Business Bureau uh, all over the country. Uh, we've never had any major issues uh, at all. Um, and uh, we enjoy a 95% success rate with our product. Um, so now it's just about getting our brand out there and, and growing our company and keep doing what we do. Fantastic. Now, the, your third driver, um, which I, in my mind is uh, pretty much the experience of the customer from the moment they place the order to the day that it actually arrives in their home, delivered to mm -hmm. whichever room they choose, uh, and I imagine wherever it may be in the home, whether it be a ground floor or three floors up. Um, you know, right. What's your thinking behind that? I, I, sure. You know. Absolutely. Well, you know, first we cover all of our mattresses in uh, a, you know, a beautiful uh, organic cotton. And we also don't like mattresses sitting around in warehousing, warehouses. And we have so many that we work with. We have 150 partners around the country. And um, to hope that all of them do uh, FIFO, which is first in, first out on your inventories, um, we just feel was just too much. We'd rather just make it fresh for the consumer. We might we lose a sale here and there because somebody wanted something in a day or two days. I'm sure that's possible. But at the end of the day, I think we gain more where every customer knows when they place an order with us, we are making the bed fresh for them. Uh, it gets to our delivery hub within days. Our delivery hub's call set up a four-hour time window for a, on a specific delivery day for the consumer. Like I said, we bring it in, we set it up in the room of choice, and we take out the old product all free of charge. And um, we just love that. We know that every product that goes to the consumer's home is sealed, packed, and fresh. There are a lot of companies that some, somebody might buy from that they, they do stock, and you're not really sure if the uh, warehouse personnel uh, didn't just pull the easiest one to get to rather than the first, you know, the last one that came in. Um, so, uh, you know, all of our products are fresh, and you can look at the tag on our bed and, and see when your product was made. It was after you ordered it, as compared to, you know, a lot of companies that keep inventory in warehouses and, you know, whether it gets dusty or there's a hole in the plastic or the box, uh, whatever it might be. We like our system. It works for us uh, and our customers appreciate it. So, so mattresses typically last 10 years, 20 years. Um, is it so bad buying a mattress that's been sitting in the back for six months or longer or a year? Say, say that for me again, Malcolm. I'm sorry. Yeah, mattresses typically last, what, 10 years, 15 years? Um, is it so bad no. to buy a mattress that's been sitting in the back of the warehouse for a few months, half a year? Well, it's, you know, it's the type of temperature in the warehouse, uh, the dust in a warehouse and things of that nature more than it affecting how long it will last. It's more, more about damage that can be caused or dust on it or there's a, a, a bag rips, things of that nature. P people generally want a fresh product that they're going to be sleeping on. That's my personal opinion. And I, and uh, luckily the people in my company all agree with us or agree with me on that. Um, but no, mattresses don't last 10 to 15 years or 20 years. Uh, you know, the, you know, basically mattresses, um, in the, uh, you know, the lower price points, let's just say uh, lower price points being the five to $900 range, they generally last about seven years. Uh, ultra premium mattresses like Safa mattresses last 10 to 15 years. Certainly the, um, the ultra premium class Stearns and Foster beds and Simmons, uh, they all last 10 to 15 years as well. Uh, latex actually even lasts longer. Latex actually gets up to, uh, you know, it can last 20 years. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we certainly recommend thinking about a new bed uh, with ultra, in the ultra premium class within 10 or 15 years, depending on use. But uh, cheaper beds, you know, cheaper made coil units, cheaper fabrics, uh, those kind of break down six or seven years. Okay. Now, in terms yep. of um, looking ahead a little bit, uh, what are your plans for 2019? Sure. Uh, uh, thanks for that question. It's a great one. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I just kind of alluded to uh, two mattress uh, launches that we're going to do. We're adding two more products to our um, uh, to, to, to our uh, offerings. 
And uh, we're also building out, which we started late uh, late in the year. We started in the third quarter. Uh, we launched what we call Sot for Dreams. And on Sot for Dreams, we sell um, a beautiful organic uh, pad, mattress pad, uh, gorgeous uh, organic, 100% organic sheets, and a beautiful natural shredded latex uh, pillow uh, that's covered in organic cotton. And this business has been hugely successful for us, and we just can't wait to just keep adding products to that. Our, our product team, uh, as we speak, is working every day. We want to bring comforters and blankets um, and add to our pillows and add to our, our sheets. We have flannel for the winter, um, some different types of fields. We also <clears throat> are going to be uh, offering bed frames, high-end bed frames, to compete with you know, the restoration hardware uh, level um, type bed frames. So we'll be launching that uh, hopefully in the second quarter. Uh, so uh, that's something that we're really looking forward to. So between our launches and uh, of our, mat our mattress launches and the wor work that we're doing on Safa Dreams, all of our what we call ancillary products, uh, that's also very, very exciting for us. We think there's just so much, so much business there for us to build on. Now, in terms of your marketing, what are, what are your plans for marketing in 2019? And maybe maybe you can share sure. a little bit of uh, what you've been doing marketing wise, and and what you plan to do more of, and maybe less of sure. in 2019. Sure, it's a it's been a major major shift for us. Um, great question, of course. Uh, when a company gets to you know the 200 million dollar range, uh, you know things start to change. Um, you know you are almost omnipresent. Uh, you know online. Uh, you know obviously you can build on that and always be more efficient, which we which we work every day to be. But uh, the mix of how we're going to promote software and advertise software in 2019, will, there'll be a major, major shift to what we call out-of-market advertising, right? The end market was the whole ROI philosophy, right? Advertising in a market where people need your product. Out-of-market is TV and uh, other uh, forms of uh, out-of-market billboards, um, you know, uh, uh, bus stops, shelters, and having 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 your, your name out there like that. So this year we're going to change our we, we're we're going to do what we're going to make a little change in our marketing mix. Um, a lot of it is going to go into uh, television. Uh, you know, so we we created uh, an enormous amount of brand content and brand assets to uh, bring to market, and we started in the fourth quarter. And uh, it's uh, already proven to be very, very successful. We're feeling a lot of wind in our back coming into uh, into this January, into this 2019 first quarter. Um, but we will be doing a lot of television, a lot more uh, Facebook, um, and a lot of YouTube. Um, so those, 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 that, that's what I'll give you for now. We have a bunch of other things that we're doing as well, uh, but um, not prepared to talk about that yet. <clears throat> now, do you do all this in-house, or do you... Have partners to help you with your marketing? Uh, no, for well, for our branding, <clears throat> for our branding, we uh, we work with a company called Preacher out of Austin, Texas. We have two offices. We're based out of New York, Queens, um, and our and our other office. That's where we do all of our uh, uh, customer service, um, all of our ordering, uh, financial is all done in, in in New York, and all of our marketing is done in Austin, Texas. Uh, so we have we have our office down there as well, uh, and Preacher is our branding company, and they're based out of Austin. <clears throat> and then for a lot of our uh, media buying, we use a company called Media Storm. Uh, they're uh, based out of uh, downtown Manhattan, uh, and they're our partners in our our media buying approach uh, uh, going forward. Uh, so far in 2019. Okay, so do do you, what what to what degree of do you do your marketing in house? Uh, well, the marketing in-house, our performance marketers, um, you know, the bulk of it, you know, our performance marketing is still done out of our Austin office. So I would say that 70%, uh, at 70, 80% right now, and that'll probably go down to 60% because, you know, our mix is changing. Right. And what do you define, what do you mean by performance marketing? Performance marketing is the ROI in market. Okay. You know, text ads, you know, being, you know, people Google uh, something in the mattress uh, world, uh, we're going to show up. That's right. what I mean by that. Right. Got mm -hmm. it. Okay. And have you now, now what's your thinking behind shifting to these out of market philosophy? Because at the very beginning of our conversation, you mentioned how, uh, a bit of the out of market 
advertising was a bit of a waste of money, right? Because people aren't really looking to buy sure. a mattress. So now sure. you're at the point yeah. where you're thinking it does make sense. So uh, yeah, well, behind yeah. That? Let me let me clarify. I, I I didn't mean for it to sound like it was a waste of money. It just cost a lot of money when you don't have a brand yet, or you don't have enough money to keep having out of market branding. So now that we're a, we're a company that you know we've made money uh, since we started, and based on that, we're able now to go out and actually spend enough money out of market. Uh, so you know that takes months and months for you to start feeling the wind at your back. We are now in a position where we're able to go out and do that. And what that allows us to do is build a brand because you know people might have known us uh, when they went searching, but before they searched, they wouldn't have heard of us. So now uh, they're going to, you know, now when they go search, they're also, you know, more than likely would have seen three of our commercials. So that will then help the performance marketing side. Right. And exactly. that's kind of our philosophy. So now, now we feel comfortable uh, because of the size that we are. You know, to grow a company to have 18 factories and 150 delivery hubs is different than having one factory and two hubs, you know, in the Northeast. So now we're at the point where we feel, you know, I've been disciplined enough. I've been ROI focused enough. Now I want to take the company and make it a billion dollar company. And you can't become a billion dollar company in the way we were doing it. To become a billion dollar company, you have to build a brand. You have to have brand identity and you have to have your name out there prior to when somebody needs a mattress. So when they do need a mattress and they search or they start thinking about it, you're going to be top of mind. Right. Now, how are you going to measure the value of your out-of-market marketing? Uh, that's always difficult, but we, that's where we work with companies like I mentioned before, MediaStorm. Um, you know, my own we have our own analytics team. We have a data warehouse and an, an analytics team. We, you know, everything is data. One thing about today's business. When you think back about business 20, 30 years ago, for those who know it, whether you were, you know, particularly in retail, um, I think you did business more from the gut. Um, they just, you know, obviously there were ways to analyze your business 20, 30 years ago, but nothing compared to today. Today, your business can almost become very mathematical. Um, you know, obviously you can always have a new competitor that comes in and shifts the way you look at things, but generally speaking, uh, years ago, you, you you put ads in newspapers or you you would just and, and hope that people would come into a retail store and foot traffic was good and you'd see sales go up and you do surveys. Today, a customer coming from online, you could basically um, follow exactly how they came to you, you know, uh, how long they spent on your site. You can retarget them. Um, so it just becomes it, the, the world, the business world today to me is so exciting because if you have a great analytics team, uh, you understand your marketing, you have enough data and we have years and years of data that help us so much have what I consider to be an advantage. Uh, that's what makes us good at what we do. Right. So, <clears throat> you know, how can you track, you know, what are can you give some examples of how you can be tracking your out of market, um, marketing and advertising. Sure. So our out of market, you know, you, you know, an easy one would be right. You know, you, 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 you know, when your television commercials are running, let's just say, yep. and then you're watching the flow of traffic to your website, you know, has your direct traffic for sattva.com gone up sure. uh, while you're running those commercials. So it's stuff just as simple as that. And then it allows us to retarget those customers and so forth. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's just the simplest, that's putting it in simplest terms. Right. Uh, okay. There's so much data that goes around, you know, um, uh, out of market and, and how to analyze it. It's certainly harder than when people just click on you for a text ad on online. Yeah. Uh, it, there's, there's more work to it, but, uh, certainly manageable. And, uh, you know, we're, we're in the process of, we think becoming great at that. Right. Uh, but again, we just, we just really started our out of market program, uh, you know, late in the year, uh, yep. 2018. Mm -hmm. How are you going to measure the top of mind metric, right? where people see the advertisements and they know the name and they're not ready to buy a mattress yet. But sure. you know, three years down the line, they, they go, oh, time for me to buy a bed. And then they go, oh, I'm going to check out you know, Sapa. And they don't sure. even know why uh, they're the, checking out. Uh, they, just, they just know it, that it, it's in their head. Yeah, it's a very simple answer. Conversion rate goes up. Okay. Period. That's it. Conversion rate goes up. Uh, so in other words, let's say you're unknown and people come to you, they click on you, then they want to shop around. It might take longer for them to purchase. They're going to call you 
a couple of times. They might go on the website way more times than they would today. Uh, or, or when they when they are aware of your name or they've seen you or they're comfortable with your name because they've seen you on television, you're going to close them fast. You're going to close them more often. So it's conversion rate. Right. Uh, and that's what we that's what we consider the wind at the back of the performance marketing team. Right. For sure. And I guess you're going to I guess you're going to have to be pretty careful with your analysis to make make sure you have the right attribution. Right. Because your performance marketing team isn't going to just be kicking back and keeping things static. Right. They're going to be trying to improve those things. Uh independently yeah. if you're out of out of uh, market marketing. Totally. Uh, what you're saying, Malcolm, is 100% correct. Um, that is, it's basically the whole business. You know, obviously, when you, it takes a long time to build what we built from yeah. a manufacturing and delivery standpoint, and very, very hard for people to do today because when I was building this, the click price, the average click price in the mattress space was less than half of what it is today. So I was able to build out a network, pay a lot of extra money for deliveries all over the country. I was able to afford it because the click price was low. But now that the click price is high, you can't you can't spend that extra money to build out a network as you grow throughout the country. Uh, so I was able to bring my delivery costs down because I have such a huge, I have such a large network um, <clears throat> while while the price was going up. So uh, to do both today to have a huge network and pay the click price. You know, you know, a company would have to gamble millions of dollars a month to see if uh, their system would work. So we feel we're in a real fortunate position. And, um, you know, now it's all just about, you know, figuring out the attribution, as you just uh, described. That's, uh, that's the major part of the business. Our, our other part of the business, manufacturing, logistics, I don't want to say it's easy for us. We're just very good at it. It runs, and we, I want to keep growing that. Today, the Sattva company is approximately 60 miles away from every every person in the United States, I'm sorry, uh, 60 miles away from 80% of the population in the United States. I want to grow that. I want to try to get even closer. I want to try to get under 50 miles away from 90% of the American population. And that's a goal that I have for the next 18 to 24 months. Right. So in terms of marketing, are you doing uh, email marketing? Are you doing uh, uh, snail mail marketing? Yeah, well, uh, we we have found some success uh, this past year in the last half of uh, 18 uh, with email marketing and also direct mail. Um, so uh, that's something that we're going to uh, do a lot more uh, uh, work in uh, in 2019. Okay. Now, how about on the mm-hmm. challenges side of the equation? What are the challenges that, that, that you see uh, you need to overcome to hit your targets for 2019? Uh, the balance of out of market branding and you know competition online, and again for me it's always been how can we get out there and tell our story better? Uh, we feel we are a clear win if you're shopping online for a mattress. Our system is better, our products are better, uh, and when I and and I just don't want we we trying to get people to not look at us because we're online that we're like a bed in the box. Uh, a 16 inch by 45 inch box with a mattress stuffed in it. That's not who we are. We are a luxury brand uh, that you buy online. It has the same options that you would have in a store. You can even buy your 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 box foundations, metal frames, adjustable bases, all in home white glove delivery. You have choices of heights. You have choices of comfort levels. So it's really like shopping at a store without a store, as compared to a, a one type of mattress compressed in a box that gets to your doorstep. And that's my biggest challenge, is making people understand that. When you sell purely online, the connection to the bed in the box, uh, and again, bed in the box, all the companies have done a good job promoting bed in the box. To me, I think in a, in a year or two, that's gonna be the brand, is bed in the box. It's almost like a commodity. But uh, just making sure, and, and again, I know there's a market for it. Uh, in, in our opinion here, you should never have to spend more than $500 for a bed in the box. But for a better quality product, um, you know, we think the Sattva company is the answer. Um, you don't need to go to a store. Uh, you can come. You get a great home trial, 120 days, in-home white glove delivery. We remove the old bed. Everything that you can possibly want, we have to offer. So you mentioned before. And, get, and, get, and I'm sorry, Malcolm, and getting that message out is the point. Okay. Uh, how, do I make that, how do I make that clear? That is, that is the most challenging thing that uh, sits on my desk right. and looks at me every day. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Uh, earlier in our conversation, you mentioned that you're that a a ninety five percent number that your ninety five percent success rate or satisfaction rate for that five percent. Sure. Um, you know, of people who weren't satisfied, who weren't happy. Um, what was sure. the what was the drivers of their dissatisfaction and, and, and happiness? Sure, sure. Well, for some folks, it's just not the right system. You know, we're a Euro pillow top. We we have what we call the most popular type of bed uh, in the ultra premium classification. Uh, you know, in our inner spring line, it's the same type of bed that you'll find in any luxury hotel. You know, individually wrapped coils, a Euro pillow top. Um, but it, you know, it might not be the right system for someone. Uh, that's number one. Number two, we don't have extremes. So people who like a really floppy, soft bed, probably not our customer. And somebody who likes something like tabletop hard, that's not our customer. So on a scale of one to ten, the one and two customer and the ten customer, or even the nine and ten customer, is really not for us. Uh, we're really the customer like more in the middle. You know, the three to eight. Uh, our be best selling is that right in the middle, medium firm. Uh, and we have stuff that's, you know, 15, 20% firmer or 15, 20% uh, softer. But, you know, we just didn't want to be in a business where we were sending, selling something that was rock hard. I'll lose that sale for the, f there are a few folks who need that. Uh, they need it for maybe physical reasons, medical reasons. And I totally understand that. Uh, and then there are people who like really floppy, soft beds. And they're good for a while. But over time, they'll probably have an issue with them, although they could be comfortable for a period of time. But software company is all about support. Uh, and so I didn't want to go too soft. So ours up from like a three to an eight with the uh, main seller being in that middle range, that, that, that five to seven range. And we really believe in support. Um, you know, a, a bed, it's not just how it feels when you go into it, but a bed should feel great when you leave it. And that's what our beds are really about. We support what we call the lumbar zone from the middle of the thigh to the top of the stomach. That's the most important part. You never want the body to V. Uh, when you turn to your side, you want your natural gaps and arcs uh, to be filled with support uh, and not fight you too much in the shoulder and neck area. And these, this is how we, how we think about it. And, and, and people do not today think about sleep the right way. And I pitch this all the time and I talk about it regularly whenever I have an opportunity and we try to get our, 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 our customer representatives to talk about it if, if the consumer gives us the opportunity to. Sleep is an activity. Um, you know, look, we all go out and we have fun, but the worst thing you do is when you have a lot of fun and somebody drinks too much and they, they fall asleep on a couch or they just went home and fell asleep in their clothes, that's the worst sleep you can get. Uh, for regular life, you know, your regular work life, your regular weekend life, you want to prepare for sleep just like you do if you're going to go play a sport, uh, you stretch, uh, you put on the right equipment, and you go work out. Um, if you are Whatever it is you do in life, basically you go and you prepare for it, like whether it's a test at school or you're in a dance, you practice and you prepare for it. Sleep is the same exact thing I tell everyone. You have to have a mental preparation for your sleep and physical as well. You have to make sure the temperature is right. I know me personally, I like to take a warm shower before I go to sleep. The temperature in the room has to be right. I need a little pillow on under my right leg. I need to be wearing the right clothes and I prepare for sleep. It's an activity. Um, and I just try to get, we, you know, the software company tries to teach everyone that. And one of the other things that we've done this past year is we've built a tremendous amount of content. So anybody who is looking for any information about sleep or mattresses, they can come to the software company, whether you buy from us or not, and get a world of information on sleep, sleep technologies, what's good in the mattress, what to look for in a mattress, why you need a box spring or not, or a frame. We have a tremendous amount of content. We believe that we can be the best educators online for sleep and for mattress products because we operate in basically every category, right? Air, um, uh, inner spring, foam, and latex. Fantastic. Um, three last questions for you. Um, if you were to summarize Sattva in one line, what would it be? Truth. <laughs> okay. We 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 have we have brought the truth to the mattress industry. We have exposed it for what it is. We have no gimmicks. There's no confusion. We don't offer you know discounts and 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 wild sales. None of that. We believe in objective measures of comparison. Uh, check our products. Measure it against someone else's, and we believe we'll be the better choice and the better value at the end of the day, more often than not. 
Mm -hmm. All right, fantastic. And uh, the two last questions I have for you, Ron. Who are your ideal customers, and what's the best way for them to contact your company? Sure. Uh, well, we always tell everyone go to Safa.com. That's the easiest. Get get the first feel for us, and you know, from our website, you kind of get a feel for who the company is. Uh, we would love for everyone to call. We think that is uh, just a, a, a you know just a great introduction to who Safa is as well. See, no matter when you call, uh, again, like I said earlier in the in the broadcast, uh, three at night, three in the afternoon. We don't care. Call. You're going to get someone really nice who's going to be helpful who wants to. Uh, give you great information and we want to make sure we sell you the right product and if it's not we won't sell it but uh, we, we want to show that off so um, uh, that's uh, that's kind of how we uh, look at that would you like to uh, spell out your domain name for your website and, and if you like give your phone number uh, sure um, it is Sattva S-A-A-T-V-A dot com and Sattva is Sanskrit I think I might have mentioned earlier for truth and purity um, that's what that does. That's that. That's what Safa means. Uh, and yes, and our phone number is eight seven seven six seven two two eight eight two. Thanks so much, and Ron. We'd love for uh, yeah, of course. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry for uh, talking over over you, but thanks so much for uh, being on the show and sharing how you grew your company so fast. Great, Malcolm. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for the great questions, and uh, we hope to hear from um, you soon. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with Ron Rudson, the president and CEO of Sotba Mattress, about his company's rapid growth. For interviews with other fast-growing, high-value sales companies, or to learn how we can accelerate your firm's high-value sales through automation, visit Eversprint.com.